Hello to the urologists everywhere. This is Muhammad Nuruddin and um, welcome to the new series which is called five minutes or less. In this series I will try to cover each topic in uh, less than five minutes and hopefully you find that useful. The main aim for that is to get a really fast few key words about this topic which could help you to revise it for the exam or if you are seeing it in the clinical life practice. So I'll speak in this topic about the priapism and hopefully you'll be able to cover it in this short time. And just before I would speak about the priapism, I would just go fastly through the mechanism of the erection. Um, as you know, for an erection to happen, you need an audiovisual or tactile stimulation, and this will initiate the brain to send a neuroendocrine stimulus through the spinal cord to the cavernosal nerve, and this will stimulate the cavernosal um, sinusoids to release the nitrous oxide. The nitrous oxide is stimulated the guanylate cyclase enzyme, which converted the GTB to cyclic GMB, and this decreases the intracellular calcium, and this leads to smooth muscle relaxation, and hence the cavernosal dilatation, which increases the blood flow and fill the sinusoids of the corpus cavernosum. The expansion of the sinusoidal spaces against the tunica albuginea compresses the subtunical venous plexus and decreases the venous flow. More stretching happening to the tunica albuginea, and this is compress the emissionary veins, which diminishes the venous flow too much, and these maintain the erection. Um, more rising of the intercavernosal pressure will cause the penis to become more rigid. Once the orgasm happens, this reverses the whole process by stimulating again the autonomic nervous system, and this secretes the um, phosphodiesterase enzyme, and this increases the intracellular calcium and reverses the whole process by causing a smooth muscle contraction and then decreasing the inflow, releasing on the pressure, opening again the emissionary vein, and then a detumescence happens to the penis. This process happens in to six stages as illustrated here. Feel free to pause this slide and learn more about these stages if you would like. So what is a priapism then? There is a few key words that you need to know about the priapism. It is a prolonged, unwanted erection in the absence of sexual desire or stimulus and is lasting for more than four hours. According to the mechanism it happens with, there are few types of the priapism. Either it's an ischemic in which there is an influx of the blood but there is no outflux or very low outflux and this causes an ischemia to the cavernosal tissues or it is a high flow in which there is a reason that there is a lot of blood going inside the penis without a proper drainage of all of this amount or it could be recurrent or a stuttering priapism in which there is a, a repeated attacks of this priapism happening most probably is an ischemic type but sometimes a high flow also. And there are multiple reasons for the priapism. Either it's a primary cause, which is idiopathic, we don't know the reason, or it is secondary due to a hematological disorder like the sequel cell anemia, medication like the intracavernosal injection of the prostaglandins, or many other antihypertensive, antipsychotic, and anxiolytic drugs can cause that. Uh, trauma can cause a um, high flow priapism. Uh, neurobasic causes such as spinal cord injury, all of this could lead to a priapism at the end. So once it is suspected, it's a clinical diagnosis and it needs to be dealt with as an emergency. In the high flow cases, you could start initially by the conservative way of ice packs, cold shower, and trying ejaculation. But most probably you will need to do what we call um, decompression and aspiration. So you will need to start by injection of local anesthetic. Then you can use a butterfly cannula ET engage from the lateral aspect of the corpora and start to aspirate the blood out of the penis until you get the fresh colored uh, blood. The maximum amount that you can aspirate is 50 mils. If this didn't work, you have to shift for the intercavernosal injection of the phenylephrine. Most of the vials in the UK come as a 10 milligram um, in one milliliter um, vials. Then you have to dilute that. So you take this one mil and dilute it in 10 mils of saline. Then take another one mil of this dilution and put it in another 10 mil of saline. Then start to inject two milliliters of this dilution every five minutes. And you definitely need to do that under cardiac monitoring. Otherwise you could lead to an arrest and other cardiac arrhythmias. If the intercavernosal injection didn't work, then you have to shift for the shunting techniques. 
And the, the whole idea of this shunting technique is to divert the cavernosal blood to the venous draining system by creating a shunt between the corvus cavernosum and the corvus spongiosum. There's different techniques of doing that, either like the winter shunt, including just making an incision in the two cavernosum and this the blood will be draining, or you can use a snake maneuver in which you use one of the dilators to dilate the whole track and this will be draining. But there's other different techniques and I will leave you to look at that and read more about it. If this didn't work, you will need to discuss with the patient the option of the benign processes. The proximal shunts nowadays are really obsolete, no one is doing them. Um, or if the patient presented really late after two days or three days of that priapism, then there is no role for the shunting here because it will not work and the ischemic damage has already started. So then you need to counsel them for directly an implantation of the benign processes. With the high flow, the management is, is completely different. Aspiration and decompression will not solve the problem. You usually need to find the reason of the high flow shunt and embolize it to, the, to, to stop this process from happening. At the end, thank you all for your attention and hopefully we have covered the topic in a good way. Please send me your feedback by scanning these codes and see you in the coming um, topic. Thank you all.